What's going on, y'all? And welcome back to the Friday edition of the Morning Vibe. Now, it's always a special edition when we hit it on Friday because, I mean, come on. We're rolling hard into the weekend. Hopefully, each and every one of you had a fantastic, amazing week. Man, that beat hits different on Fridays, don't it? You got, you just got to know on Fridays, it just hits just a little bit different. I hope you guys had a great week headed into the weekend. Coming off of Fat Tuesday this past week, Mardi Gras in full swing in most places. I know last weekend we had the, the Mardi Gras parade here in Pensacola. That was on Saturday night. Um, and, of course, there was all the festivities downtown for Fat Tuesday. You know, it, it's crazy because when I didn't live in the south, like down on the coastal towns, I just assumed that – Mardi Gras was going on in New Orleans, and that was it. I had no idea that all these little towns down here, I mean, Mobile has one, um, Navarre has a Mardi Gras parade, Pensacola Beach has their own Mardi Gras parade, and then we all we have all the stuff here in Pensacola, um, just all along the coast down here. Yeah, it's Mardi Gras everything when it happens, so um, always a cool set of events if you're not familiar with it. I highly, I highly recommend, if you're ever like planning a a cooler weather trip to the area, come when Mardi Gras is going on. There's a lot of cool stuff, man. Um, we, especially here in Pensacola, we've got a lot of stuff that we do. And um, they have the potty gras parade. And when I first heard them, I was like, potty gras, I'm like, what's going on with that? And then it dawned on me. It's like, they're talking about paws, like dog paws. So it's all about bringing your pets out. Um, they close down the streets. They do like a little parade, just a lot of cool stuff going on. It's been an eventful week, um, here in our world for sure. Um, we've tried to upload more consistently to the morning vibe. We appreciate you guys being patient. We appreciate you guys hanging in there with us. Um, we are having a blast sitting down with these podcasts for y'all. If you guys missed Wednesday's episode, um, we we did an episode with Chase and I called Am I the A-Hole? So I'll link that like right up here. Make sure you guys check that video out because that was a really, really cool deal um, to have him sit on the podcast with me. He is obviously not completely comfortable on camera yet, but we are getting him there. Like we, we almost got Chase comfortable on camera sitting there for the podcast. He is such an entertaining kid. Um, Chase does his own thing. But uh, really, really cool to see him kind of flourish and come alive on camera. I'm really excited to do those with him in the future. We're going to try to make that an every Wednesday thing. And even though based on the title, we do still keep that a clean episode. So if you're watching that with your kids or your family, we don't do any cussing or anything like that in that. We always make sure we keep that clean for the kiddos, even when we're talking about an a-hole. And, uh, you know, let's be honest. Sometimes those are out there. We, it's just part of life. You're, you're going to encounter some. If you haven't encountered any yet, you're going to encounter some. Another big weekend coming up here in Pensacola. We have got Pensacon 2023. This is the 10-year anniversary of Pensacon. And I will tell you guys right now, I had a I had a dad fail this week. And we're going to talk about that real quick. And then we're going to get into the topic, the meat of today's podcast, because that's what you guys are here for. But first, I want to tell you guys a quick story about my dad fail. Um, Chase loves to go to Pensacon. For those of you who don't know, Chase, my oldest son, which is the one that did the podcast with me on Wednesday, he has been building video games since he was six years old, literally six years old. And now um, he has become quite an accomplished game developer on the indie game series. Um, had several different games that he's worked on. He's had a couple games that he's developed completely on his own. Has actually started his own video game studio, Splendid Dog Studios. So uber, uber proud of everything Chase is doing and has done. Um, that kid's got a bright future, man, and I'm really happy for him. But one of the things he really, really enjoys is Pensacon. Now, if you're not familiar with what these conventions are, like a Pensacon or a Comic-Con or something like that, basically, it's just a convention where a lot of like-minded people show up. Pensacon is, you know, old movies, anime, um, video game world, a lot of Star Wars stuff. A lot of people dress up. We don't dress up. I'm not that into it. Chase, he does sometimes. I think he... Last year, he did like a white lab coat with a name tag or something like that. I think he was doing something from, uh, uh, golly, he's going to kill me because I, I completely forgot. Gordon Freeman is the star of the game. but Half-Life, Half-Life 1 and 2 because they never made Half-Life 3, and that's what everybody's so crazy about. Um, but Chase loves Pensacon, and he was like, he wants to go all three days. I told him, I'm like, hey, man, not really my thing. I'll go with you on Friday, but on Saturday and Sunday, you can go by yourself. You know, He's 18 years old. He's more than capable of getting down there and going by himself. So he was going to buy himself a weekend pass, and I was going to buy just a one-day pass for Friday. Well, Sarah was looking at the something online there day before yesterday, and we found out that Saturday had sold out. And I told him not to buy tickets online because when you buy tickets online, you have to wait in this god-awful line down there just to get your pass to pick it up at will call. And I'm like, man, let's just – And then, but last year we went and we bought our tickets. And we just walked straight in. I'm like, let's just do that. Like, let's just go buy our tickets and walk straight in. 
Well, then Saturday sold out. And I'm like, man, I was the one that talked him out of like getting the three day pass early. So I felt really, really bad. Um, but he's fine. He's still going to go on Friday and Sunday, but um, it'll be cool. It's a lot of stuff. Matthew Lillard's going to be there. He played Shaggy and Scooby Doo. Scooby -Doo. But Chase is more excited because he's also playing a role in the upcoming Five Nights at Freddy's movie. So a lot of a lot of big stars there. A lot of your older stars that you know they were in, kind of in their prom when they were younger, and then they come to these conventions. Um, but it's always cool to see those. I mean, Butterbean's been there. Saw a couple of people from Supernatural last year. You guys, we've talked about the car and how much of a fan. Um, Sarah and I are, are of Supernatural. I think Tom Arnold's going to be there this year. That's like the biggest name I think we've ever. Well, I take that back. We did have the guy from Aquaman, like the original Aquaman, not uh, Jason Momoa. Um, he was there the last couple years, and that was kind of a big deal. So definitely going to be a good time. Definitely looking forward to that. But that's not what we came here to talk about. We came here to talk about fishing today, y'all. And I don't I don't get too strung up and too high high tempered or anything on fishing because y'all know I am not very good at it most of the time. If you guys tune in over on the Camera and Ron channel, if I catch a fish, I consider it luck most of the time. Um, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Got to be lucky to be good. Can't be good and get lucky. So, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm torn because I, I hear this talking. And, and what stemmed this conversation? I'll tell you guys, I've got a podcast coming out. Um, part of it will be on the main channel and then part of it will be on the morning vibe, but it is with a charter captain. And we were talking to talking to her, Rachel, and then you guys will meet her in, in the podcast coming up. A little foreshadowing there. But uh we were talking about live bait versus artificial bait. And she's like, I never use live bait. She's like, nothing against it. She's like, I just never use live bait. I would rather throw lures. And it got to thinking about it. And it like it triggered something in my head. And I was like, man, you know, I've heard that before. Why is that such a big deal? So I kind of like dug into the, the rabbit hole a little bit and it occurred to me that like serious fishermen, there is a, it's divided. Like, I mean, there's no other way to put it. It's divided y'all. Most serious fishermen, they go one way or the other. They either, they like live bait or they hate it or they like lures or they hate them. There's no in between whatsoever. Like me, I go out, I'll usually take, I'll take the house with me because you just, I need to catch something and I'm not good enough to go out there and say, oh, I'm going to throw this, this bait today and I'm going to catch this fish. That ain't the way it works for me. So I go out, I usually have some live shrimp on board. If I'm freshwater fishing, I usually always have red worms with me just in case, you know, if I can't catch a bass or something, I can always put a hook on a, on a, or a hook. I can always put a red worm on a hook and catch a bluegill. Um, so I was like, I was kind of shocked when I found out that there was such a, a distinct difference between people that live bait fish and people that use lures, um, from a content creation standpoint, if I'm just from my personal experience, this isn't like coming from anybody else. I feel like when I'm doing live bait fishing for content, if the thumbnail has live bait or cut bait or something like that in it. I feel like I get a much, much better response than if they know I was throwing lures in that video. Now that could just be my perception of it, but it definitely seems that way that um, when I'm fishing with live bait, those videos tend to do a little bit better than a lure video. And, and maybe it's, that's just on our channel. I'm not sure, but um, man, like when, if you ever want to like really dig down a rabbit hole and, and like explore some of the like inner workings of fishing and like the professional fishermen, like not the fishermen that are not like me, like the professional fishermen, Go in and just do like a Google search of live bait fishing and then non live bait fishing. And man, they, they are ripping on each other all the time. Like the guys that use live bait, they are just absolutely ripping into the guy, or I'm sorry, the guys that use lures. It's really, I shouldn't say that because the people that are using live bait, they are, they are deemed the, the ones that can't catch fish is this is just what I'm reading online. Um, and the live bait or the, the lure bait fishermen, they're the kings. Like they, they know all about it. They know how to catch fish. They don't need live bait. And I'm like, at the end of the day, if I go out there, I just want to bend a rod. And if that means I'm throwing crankbaits or lipless crankbaits or whatever they're hitting that day and they're hitting it, so be it. That's what I'll toss. But if I go out there and I can't catch anything on artificial, you dang well rest assured, I'm going to have me a, a curly or a, a live shrimp tied on just in case we're getting texts all day i forgot to turn my phone sarah yells at me so much when i forget to turn my phone off um but yeah it's like i just i guess i never realized that distinction was there now obviously tournament fishing i'm sure plays a part in this because you have some tournaments where or I'm, I'm assuming almost all tournaments is artificial only i don't know that i've ever seen a tournament where you were allowed to use live bait. not a serious tournament now i'm there that could be if you know of one out there or you know that i'm wrong about that leave a comment down below and let me know because I'm really not sure. I've never done 
um, any kind of tournament fishing yet. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But uh, it, it was it was odd to me because uh, to me, if you're going out and you're just doing fun fishing and there are no rules, which obviously if you're just creating content or out fun fishing and you're not in a tournament, why not use what's working that day? I mean, I, I've seen guys like when I was reading into some of this, there's guys that would they would rather like cut off their arm than throw a live bait out. Like, seriously, they're just like, I would never be caught dead using live bait. That's judge. And I'm like, bro, if it's if it's a shrimp and it's on my boat. I mean, I used a bumblebee one time. Now, I caught all kinds of grief over that because it wasn't really a bumblebee. It was just like a little dying bee on the back of my boat or a honeybee is what I called it. But it wasn't a honeybee. But anyways, like I, I got ripped to shreds. But I will use anything and everything that a fish will, will eat. Um, my buddy Nathan Rich, man, from uh, Southern Salt, if you guys have not checked his channel out, an amazing, amazing fisherman, guys. Like this dude, he's won uh, countless trout tournaments, uh, countless trout tournaments. But he did a video here not too long ago where he went out and used red worms for sheep's head. And I was like, man, what a unique idea. Because, and I don't know why I've never really thought to do this down here, but... When I was fishing in Kentucky, you know, if you're fishing for bluegill or something like that, wax worms, red worms, you can catch anything on those. If you're not catching stuff on a wax worm or a red worm, the fish either aren't there or they just ain't going to eat that day. But I'd never really even considered like tossing a worm out in salt water. Because I mean, obviously the worm dies almost immediately, immediately anyways, whether it's salt water, fresh water, whatever. But Nate is out here just crushing them with red worms, man. And I'm like, what in the world? is going on. I'm like, that is so cool. I got, I got to start trying to throw some red worms. So the next time I'm, I'm out on the Mako, I'm definitely going to take some red worms with me and I'm going to drop around a couple of these pilings out in the bayou just to see what will eat them. I mean, I know there's obviously the water, the water is starting to warm back up a little bit. So the fishing should turn back on to an extent here over the next couple of weeks. We've had a lot of, a lot of bad weather, just like up and down with the cold and the hot. And it's just, I don't know that much about fishing, but I know that affects it a little bit. So I'm excited for a little bit more consistency to come back to fishing. I know I've, I've watched a couple of the fishing reports. The pompanos are starting to run the beach. They're still pretty far out. Um, Justin Reed Fishing posted a report the other day, and then Tony from Fish Gum uh, put put a report out, and they had had a, you know some success some success out in Navarre. So I, it was pretty exciting to see some of those pompano moving back in. I, I like to beach fish. I'm just not very good at it. But there again entails you know, live bait versus fresh bait versus synthetic baits versus artificial. There's a lot of guys that go out there and they will throw nothing but pompano jigs. There's no way they're going to put out a set rig with some shrimp or fish gum or anything like that on it. They feel like they've got to throw those pompano jigs. They can't catch it on, you know, fresh dead or live bait, whatever you want to call it. But me, I'm just like, man, if I find something that's going to work and I can bend a rod, that's what I'm going to use every single day time it's just that's just me man if you i'd love to hear your all's thoughts on this like leave a comment down below and let me know if you're one of those diehard fishermen that only uses like you know artificial baits whatever your 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 go-to is leave a comment down below or, or let me know if you're like me and you think it's okay to like toss whatever the fish are eating that day because in my opinion my humble opinion because you know i don't catch a lot of fish I'd say, you know, use what, dance with who brung you. If you guys have never seen that Billy Ray Cyrus movie, it's it's actually pretty good. Uh, maybe one of the only thing good things Billy Cyrus did in his career, but uh, dance with who brung you. So if I'm out there and I'm, I'm catching fish on whatever I'm catching on, that's a good day for me. I ain't going to be mad about it. Guys, the weather's warming. If you're not tuned into the Cameraman Ron channel, we'd love it if you guys take a minute to subscribe over there. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. We're going to be putting out more and more content in the podcast variety. These, this is going to be our podcast channel. I am toying with the idea of like uploading some shorts to this one. So you guys, you know, comment down below and let me know what you think about that. I'm thinking about putting some of the short form content on here rather than the main channel, maybe some of our abbreviated fishing trips, something like that. So you guys leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about that. We'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you all so much for the support. As always, as you're rolling hard into this weekend, make sure you find a way to make somebody around you smile. You never know. It just might change the world. We can't wait to see y'all on the next one. Y'all take care. We'll see you soon.